What's up guys and welcome back to another Roblox Blender tutorial video. In today's video we are going to be focusing on avatar hats. Now I just want to say before we get started this is going to be a beginner's tutorial. So if you are already someone which believes you're like a pro or an expert at Blender you're probably not really going to learn anything from today's video but hey if you want to watch it for inspiration or for ideas or something then yeah go for it. But yeah as I was saying if you're a bit of a rookie or a bit of a noob and you're new to Blender and you don't necessarily know what you're doing then perfect this video is for you now you guys may remember around a month ago we were talking about UGC access coming out for everyone I believe quite a lot of youtubers covered this but these types of videos didn't really get many views so I'm assuming not many people know about this but yeah it seems in the future Roblox is working on releasing UGC for everyone which basically means you don't need to apply anymore you can just straight up upload meshes and decals and make accessories which is interesting for sure I don't really like the sound of that but there we go that's one of the reasons why i'm making this video though so if this update does come out later this year in my small attempt to save the catalog from being filled up with cubes i thought i'd make a simple guide showing you guys how to make ugc items that are pretty easy to make but they still look pretty good before we get into making the hats i just want to say very very quickly i do have two other blender tutorials on my channel i've got this one right here for making ugc egg hats this was one i made back in april for easter of course and yeah I think this video turned out pretty well it's pretty simple to make UGC eggs but I think I covered it nicely so if you want to cover this video and make an egg then yeah go for it and I also made a video about Roblox UGC faces and to be honest that's even easier to make than eggs so again if you're looking for something like this on how to make a basic UGC face that is very very easy you can also watch that video just make sure you have paint.net and blender installed here's my video from March about the Roblox UGC faces people are still using this by the way and they're making some really cool stuff and also all of the links you need will be down below in this video's description and this includes everything so like paint.net blender everything is 100% free guys oh there you go this is exactly what i like to see shelby here very recently made a ugc face from my tutorial and if she keeps this up yeah she can definitely get accepted into ugc so this is what i'm going to show you guys how to make just a basic selection of roblox ugc hats i couldn't really do one item because because obviously there's loads of different types of hats but what I've gone for is a cap I've also gone for one of those DIY sort of paper bag things I personally really liked how that turned out so I'll show you how I made that later in the video I also made a beanie hat I also like customized this one a bit so you know it's a bit like a squash like a real beanie you know you can see like the um what would you call that like the fabric or whatever and then I also made a classic top hat which again turned out very well so if you guys want to make something like this well good news it's incredibly easy I don't know how difficult it is to get into UGC these days. I would imagine if you carried on like this and just made like, I don't know, 10 decent items, even if they were pretty simple, they should still accept you, I guess. So let's make a start. Make sure you have better Roblox, Paint.net and Blender installed. Also install all of the plugins for Roblox Studio if you want to. But let's go and get an R6 dummy. You guys might have this if you saw my previous videos, but if you don't have it, let's go and get it now. So on the R6 dummy, the render mesh uploaded by myself, very simple, an original mesh made by Roblox. We are just going to download this using better roblox as an obj mesh so there you go we downloaded it that is now done so now it's time to open up blender make sure you've got paint.net open as well and yes let's go and make the first accessory So in Blender, click anywhere just to remove this. Uh, we have a cube, which we don't need. I think we should make the top hat to start off with because that one is very simple. So you can just press the delete key to get rid of that. Now we're just gonna go on add. We're gonna go on mesh and we are gonna choose a cylinder. What you wanna do next guys is just choose the scale tool and we're going to shrink this down. I think we're gonna do the base first. So the base of a top hat, maybe have it a bit smaller, something like that. Yeah, that should be fine. Now if you just do control copy, so control C and then control V on your cube, keyboard for paste now if you press s we're just going to make another one and we're going to make that a bit smaller so now if we just drag that up here using the drag tool at the side which i just selected if we maybe set it to about there and then just scale it basically what we're making now is like the top hat band we're kind of making it like the uh, classic roblox top hat but not really obviously we don't want to copy roblox because they won't be happy with that but you know we're changing it so once we've got that we're going to do Control copy again and Control v for paste and again scale it but just a tiny bit 
it. As for scale, of course, now if you use this scaling tool, we can make it a bit bigger. And basically, if you just drag it up there, something like that, there you go. You've now kind of made a top hat. Now you can press S to make this bit a bit bigger if you want to, make like the base a bit bigger. But I think so far that's looking pretty good. You guys can see Roblox top hats are incredibly easy to make. As long as you don't copy the original Roblox ones too much, you should be fine. There's plenty of UGC top hats. So what we're going to do now, guys, we're going to highlight all of it just like this, select all three parts, change object mode to edit mode. And inside of edit mode, guys, you want to do shift and N. Yeah, you want to recalculate the normals, otherwise it's just going to look incredibly glitchy and like transparent. So there you go, that should be fine. If we just go back to object mode, I think if you're happy with that, we should be able to add in a texture. And yeah, you guys know how textures work, right? We need to make one in paint.net. So I've got my blank canvas here. I might just do like a white banded top hat or something. I feel like that would be pretty simple. Or should I do like a green? Yeah, I'll do a green banded one. Maybe like neon green or something like that. So I'm going to make it all black. Then I'm just going to do like a neon bit down here. Maybe uh, this kind of color. Uh, let me just paint that in. There you go. That should look kind of interesting, I guess. We are going to go to file and save as. Then just give it a name. I called mine like top hat with some random numbers. But let me just call it um, neon green. Neon green banded top hat. That sounds good. So let's go and save this. Click on OK. And there you go. I think we're done. Now there we quickly back into Blender. We're going to select all of these. We're going to go and add an image texture because yeah, we want to add the very simple texture which we just made. So if we go and click on open, we should be able to find it. I think it was this one. Obviously, browse your own PC, go and look for it. But neon green banded top hat, we're going to open this. You might also have to click individual parts and do new and an image texture because for some reason, sometimes it doesn't work. And then just make sure you select it just like that. So let me just do it for the band as well. So image texture. Yeah, I wish you could do it all at the same time. I feel like that would save time, but let me just check. Yeah, all of them are okay now. Let's edit the base first. So we're just going to click on this. Then we're going to click on UV editing. If you just press A to select all of it, you should be able to scale it down and just make the base like completely black or scale it up, I should say. There you go. That's looking pretty good. So we're just going to leave that like that. Then if we just go back to layout, we're going to do the same for the band. So UV editing, obviously this part, yeah, you need it green. So you can see the green band is coming through and that looks pretty decent. Then on layout, obviously we're going to do the same for the top. So UV editing again and we're going to press a on our keyboard scale this to black and then there you go it should be done i think that should look pretty decent so if we go on layouts if we just change it to this option at the top actually viewpoint shading it should come through you can also do that on uv editing if i forgot to say change to viewpoint shading so on layout it should look yeah i like that it looks nice i don't know if roblox would accept this i think it's a bit too close to the original one but hey you could always change it you could always add some horns or edit it a bit if i go and select all three parts and right click and then click on join Join, then right click again and click on shade smooth there you go it's now shaded together and that looks kind of awesome let's go and add in our dummy so we can scale it down a bit so at the top we're going to go on file we're going to go on import we're going to select obj then find it i called mine dummy avatar so i'm just going to go and import this and now if i select my hat i should be able to scale it up and it should look pretty good i might have to make it just a tiny bit smaller but it's looking kind of cool already right so if i just lower that down a bit obviously using the scale tool yeah it's too big so let's press s and let's just make it a bit smaller then just scale it again there you go i'm happy with that that looks like a decent roblox accessory and obviously i could click on this i could go to file i could go and export it as an obj i'm probably not going to add this one to studio right now obviously this one's a bit of a roblox ripoff i didn't intend it to look so much like a roblox ripoff but i'll make something else i will upload something in today's video anyway so yeah that's how you make a top hat obviously before you export it make sure you get rid of the dummy by pressing delete but yeah you're ready to save this as a model oh don't forget to save the texture as well if you go on uv editing image save as you can go and save the image maybe you call it like a v2 or something so i'll just do that quickly v2.png obviously if you were going to sell this to like a ugc creator or like a youtuber that's in the stars program as i should say you'd need to give them this image and also the um, obj that you export but there you go that's pretty simple let's go and make something else So to get started guys, of course, let's go and open Blender. Let's click anywhere to close this message. What I'm thinking of making is like a simple beanie, but one that looks kind of realistic. You know how beanie hats get a bit like creased and stuff? Is that right kind of like word to describe it? I don't really know. But they're not like perfectly smooth fabric, if that makes sense. That's what I'm going to try and make now. And of course, you guys can follow along because it's so easy. So let's press delete to get rid of the cube. We need to go on add. We're going to go on mesh and we're going to add a UV sphere. We are then going to change this 
this from object mode to edit mode. And what I like to do guys is kind of change this sphere into like the beanie's top shape. So what I normally do by that is I delete like all of the lower half. What you need to do guys is select it by dragging and using left click. Obviously hold your middle mouse button to rotate the page. And if you do that and just select all of the parts here, if you select one by accident, just click off of that, hold shift. But yeah, if you go around holding shift, just selecting all of the sides here and also the bottom one, don't forget that. I think that looks pretty good. I think I've selected all of the right parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this section. So if you press delete on your keyboard and then you do dissolve vertices, I think that should work. There you go. So now we just have the top section. So if we go back into object mode, we can see we've got this sort of dome thing. And as you can see, it's a beanie shape already, but you could always scale it up a bit. It really depends what kind of beanie do you want? You know, do you want like a tall one? Do you want like a flat one like that? I think this time I'm going to go with a little tall one, maybe something like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Now, quite a few beanies do look like this, but I prefer the ones that have the sort of fabric brim at the bottom. So I'm going to add in one of these. I'm going to go on add mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder. So what I'm going to do, guys, is just S to scale it down a little bit. Then we're going to use the scale tool. So not S, like the actual scale tool. And we need to use the blue one to kind of make it like that, you know, just shrink it a bit, turn it into more of a flat sort of cylinder. So then if we move this to the top, maybe make it a bit bigger with S. As you can see, we're kind of making the beanie brim. So you want it something like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty decent, actually. If you haven't recalculated normals already, you can do that. If you go on edit mode once selecting both of them, I think the sphere should be fine. But if you just do shift then on the cylinder, then yeah, it's going to recalculate normals and it's not going to mess it up for you. So now if we go back into object mode, it should be good. I might just make this a bit bigger, but there you go. So now guys, before we join it together, I think we should sculpt the top part of the beanie. And yeah, I said sculpt. So there is something below edit mode called sculpt mode. And what this mode lets you do, I don't think I've done a video on this yet, but it basically lets you edit parts of the mesh. So as you can see here, this is like a grab tool. I've just scrolled down. This tool is called elastic deform. So this tool here, you can pretty much use any of these tools. Actually, you can just customize it to your liking. But you guys can see of this one, you can sort of drag it and you can add spikes and stuff like that. Now this is a beanie and I'm trying to go for the sort of squashed like a bit creased effect you know like what would happen if you were to wear a beanie hat in real life I'm going for that so I don't want to be adding spikes but if I just go through and try all of these sort of different textures and techniques sometimes you can actually get it looking really good so layer that's not so good obviously if you make a mistake control plus z and that will undo it clay thumb I'm just going to go through I'm going to try some different ones I'm going to see if I can get it to basically how I want it flatten I think that might be quite good this smooth effect I'm using is pretty good so I'm just going to kind of like smooth it around you know just how it would look if you're actually wearing it there you go that's the effect I wanted I want it to start looking a bit like that then we can grab some parts just a little bit I don't want to grab it out too much I do want it to look a bit maybe scruffy it's not really the right word though maybe a bit misshapen I think that's the right word obviously we're not going to be touching the bands down here because like the uh, rim of the beanie that doesn't really sort of you know squash up when you put it on your head I'm using very weird words today but whatever so what I'm doing now is I'm using the smooth tool and I'm just smoothing the sides a bit. You can sort of run it over like that or just click on certain parts. So as you can see, the beanie shape is kind of coming together now. The reason why I'm not trying to mirror it on both sides is because, you know, that wouldn't happen in real life. I'm really trying to get this to look kind of accurate. So I think so far, I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe I need to do a bit more this side though. Okay, so there you go. That's the shape I was going for. Now, if I go back into object mode, if you wanted to scale it up here, you know, make it a bit of a taller beanie, you could go ahead and do that if you wanted to. I think that's okay. Maybe I'll just make it a tiny bit taller. Yeah, I think that's all right. Now, guys, I think we should make a texture. If you wanted to use AI to generate you like a texture for any of these hats, to be honest, but obviously we're on the beanie right now. Yeah, you can use crayon. It's kind of like Dali Mini. As you can see, the texture on these beanies is quite nice. You just have to type in the keywords. This time it gave me a beanie rather than like a singular texture. But yeah, you guys get the idea. This right here is a texture I came up with before. I actually used this on my beanie from my events, like my first YouTube. UGC events. He had one that was a bit of a disaster. But as you can see, I've added like some shark spray paint thing. I'm kind of making one of those like spray paint beanie things like the one uh, Flamingo wears. I know the guy that made that. His name's something pizza. Yeah, I can't really say his name in video because I'll get demonetized. It's a bit of a weird artist name. But yeah, I think this looks pretty cool. So if I just go and combine both of these together, this is sort of my weird like knitted texture. And yeah, I'm just going to try it. Of course, control S, just go and save it. So let's go and add in the textures. We're going to start off on the main part so don't join them click on it click on new 
and of course we're just going to add in our image texture you guys should know how to do this so let's just go and open it i think i called it spray and then some random numbers so let's go and open this if we just change the view at the top here to this one the viewpoint shading there you go it's looking pretty good but it is the wrong side so i'm gonna have to go into uv editing and i'm gonna have to uh, fix that so if i just press a to select all i should be able to fix that easy press a on this side as well if i just kind of line that up yeah i kind of want it in the center like a bit i might have to like uh line it up with the grid there so there you go the a is pretty spot on i tell you what i could always do this and just make it like that yeah i kind of wanted it like that to look a bit funny like a bit um i, I do want it like a big design so maybe i'll just move it this way obviously you guys can make any beanie you want you know you don't really have to copy me if you don't want to so there you go is that in line with the grids the grids are very helpful actually they really help you line this stuff up so yeah i think that's okay it's a bit weird but i like it maybe just make it a bit to it i have seen some people on roblox that have done it like that and make it really long yeah let's have it like that that does it kind of cool so just press a to finish off there you go the only thing to make sure really if you're editing the texture is just make sure the lines match up you know don't overlap it or anything but yeah i'm happy with that i think that looks kind of funny let's go and do the bottom part as well so now back on layouts we just need to edit the bottom part which i'm gonna make a gray so again let's go on oh no we need to add the texture so just click on new uh just go and add image i almost forgot yeah you must make sure the texture is selected on both of them and choose whichever one you want so this one now if we go to uv editing we should be able to get it looking nice so if we just press a this is going to be really simple guys we just need to shift all of this over to the gray section we're just going to put that there just make it a bit smaller maybe something like that and obviously this bar at the bottom is all going to be in gray and yeah i think that's quite good okay so we've got the texture i think it's about done i know it still looks a bit weird but that's because it's in low poly mode so what we're going to do now is select both of them we're going to right click we're going to join these and we're going to shade it smooth and there you go now it's looking more like a roblox accessory so this is like a beanie which is you know a bit more realistic i guess we can try and add this to an avatar one thing you have got to do though is get rid of one of these materials just click the minus on one of them and you should be fine so yeah if you're ready you could go file and export this thing you could go and save it as an obj you should know how to do that also if you go to uv editing make sure you've saved the image so just go on image uh save image as just save it as a png and yeah you should be good to go let me just go and import like a random dummy or something so we can see what this looks like so there we are it will look something like this maybe the band will look slightly different because i know on blender sometimes it has this like unusual reflection illusion going on i don't think it would really have that i'm um, on roblox so yeah i like that i did just use the sort of um rotate tool just to you know rotate it back a bit and honestly i think that looks good if you do this with beanies it really helps when people try to add in like hairs and hats and stuff so yeah this one looked pretty good i think if i go on to shading yeah you can see it looks quite nice in here as well so there you go that's how you make a beanie a sort of more realistic one that's you know a bit squashed at the top i actually like that a lot So now guys, we're gonna try making a Roblox cap. I think the cap I'm gonna try and make is more of like a classic one, maybe like a 2013 style, but it still looks decent. So let's start by going to add. We need to click on mesh. We need to click on UV sphere. So there you go, we get a good old sphere again. Then guys, if we just change this to edit mode, we're basically gonna do the same thing. So hold shift, just go and select this part, scroll around, holding your middle mouse wheel down, go and select this part and do it again. Just go all the way around until it looks something like this don't forget the parts at the bottom if those weren't highlighted now we can press delete and we're going to do dissolve vertices and there you go we've now got the top part so basically the same as the beanie now i didn't copy anyone's like uh, guide with this this is sort of my own thing which i found out but honestly i think it looks pretty cool so go on the scale tool just make it a little bit bigger we're not really going to go for the beanie style we just need it a tiny bit bigger and now guys we need to add in a cylinder so we're going to go on add we're going to go on mesh and a cylinder for this you can scale it quite small maybe something like that we're going to need two cylinders to be honest but i think we're going to start off with this one for the brim so there you go now just make it a bit smaller maybe something like that let me just have a look if i just scale this up does that look right does that look right for a cap i mean you can kind of see it like um forming already can't you we're obviously nowhere near done yet yeah i think that's okay to be honest let's start off on this part then so let's just click on this cylinder we're going to go into edit mode we're going to do shift and n to recalculate the normal 
animals. And what we need to do, guys, is basically modify it. Right now, it's too much of a circle sort of shape. We need to change it into more of like a cap sort of brim. So if I just zoom in a bit, let me just get to the right angle for you guys. What I'm going to do is actually just highlight this part at the front. Uh, maybe that? Okay, I think if I do a bird's eye view, yeah, we need like this section here. So this section here, we need highlighted, hold shift and just make sure you get the other sides as well. Honestly, I was making this earlier and I thought it turned out really well, despite me not really knowing what I was doing. Oh, I'm also going to get this side, just add about two more there, something like that. Yeah, as I was saying, this turned out better than I expected. So now we're going to go on the move tool and we're basically just going to stretch this. And as you can see, that's more of like a cap brim shape. We might come back to editing that, but if we just go on object mode and just move this back a bit, keep on moving it back, keep on moving it back. There you go. That's more like a cap. I think that looks quite decent. One thing we should probably do though, we should probably uh, get rid of this bit at the end because that's a bit stupid. So edit mode. So just select this side as well and then just make sure the other side selected. And I'm just basically going to use the uh, move tool to sort of drag it into it. Kind of like this. You just want to drag it in like that. I know some UGC creators would say, oh, you can't do that. That's messy or whatever. But personally, I don't really care. The thing is, it's going to be hidden anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Even though the shape might might look a bit strange the front of it's perfect so now if we go back to object mode and we just move it back you guys can see you've sort of got a basic cap going on like you know it looks pretty decent there you go maybe something like that that's not really too bad obviously we've still got a bit to do i would recommend maybe scaling this a bit more maybe drop this down a bit and actually add in another cylinder so let's just go there we're just going to move that down a bit obviously we're going to scale it so just make that a lot smaller maybe to about there and if we go and move this up maybe to something like that i I think that looks pretty good so yeah as you can see it's coming together uh, I might just make that a tiny bit smaller just so it matches or whatever but there you go yeah I think that's all right if you wanted to scale this to make the front of it smaller you could go ahead and do that now to be honest it's up to you it really depends like how long you want it maybe something like that looks pretty good recalculate the normals on the base if you haven't done that already so shift then don't forget to do that because yeah I promise you if you don't recalculate normals it sort of like inverts itself and it looks so weird I don't know if I like this or not. I might sort out the front a bit more. Yeah, I'm not really used to making caps yet. I'm trying to base this off my cap right now in real life. And to be honest, it's not bad. Maybe I'll try and move these sides back just a tiny bit. There's actually something else you can do, guys. If you go and add in another cylinder, you know, sometimes those caps have like a tiny little, I don't really know what it is, like a tiny like button looking thing at the very top. You can also add in one of those if you want to. My cap in real life does have one. So I'm going to add one on this, you know, like one of these um, sort of like uh, I don't even know what you'd call that like a tiny little nub thing at the top so we're going to add in one of those and there you go I think that's pretty good let's go and design a texture oh before that don't forget to recalculate the normals on this thing shift then I'm going to try and use this texture that I put together with my logo on I don't really know if this is going to look good but yeah maybe it's worth a try I might make that logo a bit smaller actually so yeah let me go and save this and we can see if it's any good let me try it on the middle part first so if I just click on new and if I just go and add this as an image texture if I just go and open it. I called this thing red paint. I don't know why but there you go. I guess because it looks like paint. So if I go into UV editing and if I just change the mode at the top we can give this a try. Oh it kind of looks cool actually. Obviously it's not selected properly which I'm gonna have to fix. So if I just go on A and go on A here I'm just gonna have to move that down a bit and we can basically put it in the center using the grid. So maybe something like that just put it down a bit. Okay I've got to make that a bit smaller. That looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah, right there. I like that. That's awesome. The only thing I've got to do is just make sure these bits aren't overlapping. So maybe I can just move that to the side. Sometimes it does glitch out the texture a bit, but mostly with stuff like this, you wouldn't really notice it. So I don't think it matters. Let me just move that a bit closer. Let me just move this side. It's not really ideal editing house like this, but as you can see with this kind of texture, it doesn't make a difference. But yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit lower. Awesome. Now let's do the same for the brim at the front uh, let me just go new let me go and add in an image texture and of course we're going to use the same image so we can just select it from the drop down list so if you go to uv editing this time we need to edit it but we don't want to include the logo so yeah i didn't put a logo in the best place did i uh or oh, whatever maybe something like that yeah i think that looks okay to be honest that does look kind of cool i could always edit it a bit so it doesn't matter too much that's what i made the uv map 
map look like so you can reset it if you want if you do U, I think uh, if I just press A on this part yeah if you click on U, you can reset it back to normal it looks all right I'll just deal with it we've got two more parts the button at the top I might as well just do that quickly so again guys you just want to go in and add an image texture select it from the drop down list this one's going to be pretty easy just make sure you don't have it on the logo in the middle so maybe just put it like that what does that look like uh, yeah I'm happy with that that's fine and then we also have the lower part so click on this and again we're going to add in our image texture and select it from the list press a for all and this one again is going to be pretty easy because we can't really see it so I'm not really fussed what this one looks like but we can have a quick check and okay I might make it a bit different actually maybe something like that I might make this one like a bit darker maybe just have it there does that look better yeah that's not too bad actually yep I think that looks fine for me so there we are we've got some crazy looking blood hat if I just go and select this and then just join it and shade smooth if we then go and remove all of the materials but probably just keep one of them there you go you now have your very own cap you can scale it now if you want so make it a bit taller maybe something like that yeah I guess we can try this on a Roblox avatar so now all we have to do is just scale it to the avatar so let's just use the rotate tool hold control maybe just turn that around a bit maybe something like that hold s we're just going to make it smaller and just go and move it somewhere probably move it to the top of his head I think that would make sense well that's the wrong one it's the blue arrow that one there maybe just scale it a bit more you can rotate this one back if you want if you want it to like fit in with hairs and stuff normally that looks quite good and yeah there you go that's how you make a robux cap it's honestly up to you if you want to angle it a bit or if you just want it normal like that that's also fine but yeah I think that came out all right not too bad I kind of like it <laughs> Now I'm going to be showing you guys how to make two of these paper bag type things. I'm going to show you how to make the paper version and then also the trash bag version. The trash bag version is more of something I came up with, but I think it looks really cool. So yeah, we're going to start off just by using our cube. And what we're going to do, guys, is change it into a bit more of a rectangle shape. Maybe something like this. You can make it a bit, um, you know, shorter if you want to. Definitely make it a bit thinner. We can always edit it a bit when the, um, you know, the dummies in Ported, but kind of base it off a paper bag so could you imagine a shopping bag being something like this yeah that's not too bad maybe just make it a bit slimmer there and yeah I think that's pretty good obviously it doesn't have to be 100% accurate to mine but yeah we should be good to go so let's go on edit mode we're just going to click on this we're going to change it to edit mode you guys should know about this now what we're going to do is just shift then straight away just to recalculate the normals and basically guys we're going to subdivide it so to do that you want to right click with your mouse and click on subdivide now as you can see right this will split up your cube into sections but we want to do this a couple of times because obviously we want to change this into a paper bag so maybe something like this there's quite a few sections right there I think that's looking pretty good and there's one thing we can do straight away guys we can actually make the spikes of the paper bag so you know if you've ever gone to like one of those old-fashioned sweet shops and they have those like paper bags we're going to be making those little spikes I think they're designed to like peel off you know and um, when they're all like connected together so what we're going to do guys Guys, we're going to hold shift on our keyboard and we are just going to click on these dots so as you can see I am missing out one that's exactly how you want it so don't use the edge ones use the next one and you just want to go along basically until you make these spikes so let's just go for this one then that one then that one there and then that one right there I think that should work hold on let me just try yeah there you go that's looking pretty good so that's what we're doing basically we're going to select the ones which aren't near the edge then we're going to use the uh, sort of like drag tool just to stretch them down and it's really gonna look like a paper bag like honestly this does look very good considering this is one of the uh, easiest robux hats to make i think they look amazing so there you go you guys should know what to do now you just use the uh, move tool over here just to scale it down and as you can see yes you have a paper bag sometimes the corner bit here does mess up a little bit normally what i like to do if that happens is just drag them up a tiny bit i don't actually know why it does that it's kind of strange so as you guys can see if i angle that right if i just drag it up a tiny bit as you can see it's about to disappear there you go so you want to get it as soon as it disappears just like that and there you go you won't even notice the difference so that's your basics to making a paper bag if you go in object mode if you were to shade it smooth as you can see yeah it looks good when you import this onto a roblox avatar it just looks like one of those paper bag hat accessories however i'm just going to go back a bit because i do want to edit this slightly i kind of want to sculpt it a bit so if we go into sculpt mode guys what you can do here is use the various 
various tools and you can kind of make it a bit more paper bag like as you can see you know you can crinkle it a bit because these bags are not perfect obviously they're not going to be like a perfect sort of cube or rectangle shape or cuboid whatever you want to call it so if you just use the various tools just to kind of like uh, you maybe make it a bit scruffy in a way honestly you can make a really nice looking paper bag so yeah i'm just going to go around just like you know do all the top bits just use these tools to sort of like um you know remove parts just crinkle the paper and especially if you add like a paper texture on top of this it will look like amazing the smooth tool i kind of like this one because you can do like uh, really good indents and stuff maybe don't go too crazy because as you can see there i did kind of like squash it a bit too much but you know you can always undo it if you go a bit crazy but yeah if i just smooth off the corners a bit just put a bit on top i think so far it's looking pretty good obviously when we smooth this thing using like the uh you know the main smoothing option it's going to look a lot nicer anyway flatten tool is also pretty good if you uh maybe make these bits like you know two sticking out you can always use that and also the elastic deform tool i do like to use this one as well maybe if you've got any like sharp spikes that just look a bit strange you can sort those out so yeah i think this one is looking fairly interesting maybe i can try and smooth it and we can see what it looks like and i can design a texture as well so if we go back into object mode what i'm going to do guys is right click we are going to shade it smooth and do we like the look of that i'm not gonna lie it's not as good as my last one maybe this corner is a bit dodgy so i might try and fix that but it's not too bad yeah so like i was saying guys if you just go into google and look for a texture or you can use one like this you can generate them with ai or you can just like straight up take a picture of a paper bag you know maybe you own one or if you just want to crinkle up some brown paper or even white paper and then just modify it yeah this is what i came up with so it's sort of like a paper bagish texture and what i'm going to do guys is just draw a face on top of it now this is just for an example you guys can obviously spend time making like a cool diy item just for the sake of this video i'm just going to draw like a simple face just so you guys can see how it works but yeah keep it simple you can draw something like this it's entirely up to you there you go i think that looks kind of funny some diy noob face maybe i'll just make the eyes a bit better and yeah we can go and try this and we can see if it looks any good don't forget to save it as a png so control s i'm just going to call this thing a paper bag and yeah let's go and save it so let's select our bag let's go and add in our texture so we're going to click on this thing then we just need to go and add in an image texture and let's go and open it so my paper bag texture that's perfect go and open the image now if we switch it it might load in there you go so it's looking good i like the bag texture but obviously the um the design on the front's a bit messed up so that's why we need to go into uv editing and of course we're just going to make sure our image is selected on this side as well just so we can see what we're doing we're going to change the uh, perspective view thing at the top viewpoint shading there you go and if we just press on a to select all all we're going to do guys is press a here and we're basically just going to line it up so oh mine's gone sideways okay i really didn't expect that to happen that's fine though we can just uh change it around so wait am i doing this the right way oh no it needs to be that way okay so i use that tool hold control if you want to get it accurate and yeah let's just go and put it in the middle i'm not doing mine too accurate but it is a diy so you know i don't really care too much these diy accessories are supposed to look quite funny anyway so let's go and put that there there you go <laughs> that's actually looking quite cool not gonna lie let's just zoom in uh yeah i'm just gonna line it up with the grid just a bit so that eye's gonna go there to be fair i didn't really draw this very well did i oh well, that's fine then if i just go and select the uh other parts which i'm just gonna drag across uh maybe i'll just put that up there or something something like that i'm not that fussed about this uv i think it's probably gonna look fine or you might not notice it oh maybe that part did glitch a bit actually was that yeah that's that part there i'll tell you what actually i'm just gonna move this back into itself because then the texture won't glitch out um yeah that's pretty good actually i'm happy with that let's just switch back into layouts and there you go that's how you make a diy bag i really like how these turn out they always look super funny i'll go and add in a dummy quickly so you guys can see what it looks like let me just use the move tool just to move it down a bit so i am noticing it's clipping through my avatar's head um i didn't expect that i guess i used the smooth tool maybe a bit too much i'll tell you what though i should be able to make it just a tiny bit bigger and then that won't matter there you go i think that's perfect actually so it's just hanging over the front or maybe i should just move it a bit actually maybe just center it a bit better there you go that should be good you can always make it smaller if you want to but i kind of like them in big head kind of style these diy paper bag things they're always big accessories and honestly guys i'm really happy with that that turned out very nice oh it is clipping a bit through the back one second just scale it back a bit there you go that's brilliant so yeah that's how you make the paper bags let me show you how to make the trash bag version Thank you. 
And now guys, it's time to make the trash bag or black bin liner, whatever you want to call it. I've got a really nice idea for my texture. So yeah, let's begin making this thing. And to be honest, guys, it's pretty much the same as the paper bag. But obviously, instead of paper, it's going to be plastic. So you can be a bit more messy because if you think about it, the paper bags are kind of solid. The plastic bags are more like, um, oh, how would I describe that? More wavy? Wow, that sounds so stupid. You know what I mean? They flop about a bit more. Let's just go and make the cube about right maybe something like that we can always scale it a bit better later so let's go into edit mode what we're going to do here guys is shift then recalculate all of the normals um obviously you don't want your mesh going crazy and what we're going to do is the same thing we're going to subdivide it quite a bit maybe the same you want this kind of you know number of squares i think that's pretty good however guys this time i'm going to make it a bit more random so you can move like random um you know squares down you know for the spikes because we're making a trash bag this time you don't really have to make it that neat so obviously you could do like that on this side then you can make this one a bit longer see what i mean because we're making a trash bag instead of a paper bag it doesn't have to be perfect obviously the plastic is just so like um you know random it doesn't stay still it's not really like a solid so much as the paper bags so maybe something like that because that's going to be pretty good when we go and sculpt it so now what we're going to do guys is go into sculpt mode and yeah you kind of want to go crazy while making these plastic bags. The tool I like to use is this one right here. It's called Elastic Deform. Now if you use this tool you can really sort of like misshape these um, plastic bag pieces. I don't know what the heck I'm saying. You can really sort of um, you know like move them around, mix them together and just make them look kind of crazy. So as you can see yeah it's looking a bit different than the paper one already. It still looks too perfect though so I'm gonna have to use some tools to make this bag all like uh, creased up and all like um, you know random. So yeah let me do that a bit of the various tools. We're just gonna indent here the sides because you know that's what plastic bin liners look like and just do that at the top we don't really need corners on this one so if you want to like shrink those in a bit you can do that's all good maybe something like that it's looking more like a plastic bag already i'm also going to use the flatten tool at the front i would recommend flattening one side quite a bit because obviously that's the side you're going to have your design on or face or whatever you know you want to choose got this tool the smooth tool yeah i think we've used that a bit already actually oh the crease tool this one's pretty good i was using this earlier this is really good Good for like the sides of the bag so you can you know crease the top yeah that looks nice this one's a lot more subtle than the smooth tool it doesn't you know like completely dissolve like half of it so i think that looks pretty good and yeah we're just gonna try and make this as random as possible i guess use the smooth tool on the top as well to kind of indent it a bit there you go that looks good i'm also just using the clay strips tool because of this one you can really sort of make the shape look kind of crazy so as you can see yeah that's getting a bit more mad if we use the clay tool on the spikes as well you can kind of drag them in a bit I'm probably going to stretch them out again, maybe using the uh, grab tool. But yeah, we do want to make those look a bit crazy. The inflate tool, that's another good one you can use to make the bag look a bit more puffy. If you go back into edit mode, you can subdivide it even more. So if you right click and subdivide, the only thing is you want to make sure you're using under 4,000 triangles. So if you open up this menu and go to statistics, as you can see, I'm on 3,000. So that's fine. I think the limit of triangles you can have on a UGC item is around 4,000. So as long as you have under that, you should be okay. But yeah, now I'm just going to work on just making this bag a bit more weird. It's getting there. It's not as easy as the paper bag to make one of these crazy looking ones. But yeah, slowly but surely, it's looking a bit more plastic-like. There we are. That's what I was trying to do. So using the grab tool, you can kind of stretch these bits out a bit more. And it kind of looks like slime dripping down in a way. I think that's a good way to describe it. But if you add more like, uh, you know, subdivided parts, more triangles, you can really create this nice effect. So there you go, just going around all of the edges, just uh, enlarging the sides a bit. And honestly, I think that's looking pretty good. It's looking a lot more plastic. So here we are. I've been sculpting it for a while now. And yeah, I think it looks like a plastic bag. The last tool that I'm going to use on sculpting is draw sharp because you can kind of make it look a bit more plastic if you do these sort of like divots and scrapes. As you can see, yeah, that gives off a much better plastic effect. So yeah, maybe do some of the sides. Obviously, one side you want to leave flat because that's the one you're going to put your design on. But the rest of it, you you can kind of you know mess it about a bit and there you go i'm kind of happy with that i'm not gonna lie it's not as good as the one i made earlier but it's fine they will turn out different anyway we're gonna smooth it so all of these sharp edges will end up looking better but yeah let's go over to the object mode what we're gonna do guys is right click shade smooth and let's go and make a texture okay so this one's kind of funny what i did to make this guys is i took a picture of one of my trash bags in real life and yeah it ended up looking like this i'm just gonna merge these layers actually i might just use Use brush
brightness and contrast maybe just to make it a bit darker as you can see it was kind of light because my uh, trash bag's more gray than it was black but i do want it a darker color so maybe something like that now you don't want it too dark because otherwise the texture won't show up that well but something like that that looks like a realistic bin bag and for the face guys i made something that looks really cool look what i made a diy trash mask do you get it trash bag trash gang yeah it fits in really well all i did was just use the uh, trash mask and i just did like a spray paint effect on it and honestly i'm very happy with how that turned out so yeah i'm gonna merge these layers both together let me just merge that one down i'm gonna go and save this and we can try it inside of blender so here's our trash bag let's go and add in an image texture so let's click on this we need to go and select an image image texture let's just go and click on open and then of course find it i called mine trash bag so let's go and open this image and once it opens if we just change it um okay so loaded in kind of similar to the other one obviously we've got to spin it around a bit but yeah i'm liking that so far that's actually really cool so if we go into uv editing we're going to scroll out make sure you've got um everything selected you can just change the mode press a on this part and what we're going to do guys is just make sure the face fits so it's done the same thing as last time it's kind of spun it on its side if we just use the rotate tool and hold control we can kind of get it right right so that's the wrong way so if i do it like that that should be right and i've got to get it in the center i guess oops let me just press a again so okay so i'm gonna have to enlarge this i guess if i just do s you can like scale it up a bit and then put it in the center so obviously i'm gonna line it up using the grid basically to how i want it maybe something like that you can always like shrink the gap between as well if you just like highlight half of it you could do something like that so as you can see yeah that looks kind of funny honestly though you can play around with it just to get it perfect so maybe i'll have something like that yeah that does look kind of crazy actually i'll probably modify it a bit before i upload it to roblox but you know i'm just doing this for an example so that looks good uh let me just go and move this part i'm just going to move all of it the nice thing about the bags is the texture doesn't really get muddled up too much so you don't have to be perfect with your uv map and honestly i'm not really that good when it comes to these uv maps so there you go that looks fine to me then let me just go and scale that there and i think that is probably okay maybe the texture is a bit messy at the side but i might fix that later but yeah honestly i kind of like it and then scaling it onto an avatar it's going to look something like this so there you go that is pretty awesome a literal trash bag i really like how that came out i know the mouth got a little bit distorted there but in a way i like it because it kind of looks like it's been spray painted on you know it's not perfect it's a bit scruffy that's a really cool accessory i'm probably going to upload this the one i made earlier i did do a better job on the plastic bag so i'm probably going to use that one one more thing guys if you want to um kind of like have it oh how would you call it like hollow on the inside if you want it like that rather than like a solid sort of block if you just go into edit mode and if you just like draw like a rectangle just to select all of the points at the bottom you can actually move it up using the move tool and as you can see yeah then it looks hollow inside to be honest you don't really have to do this i mean it's only if people like turn it upside down and they have a look inside so yeah obviously you don't want it to come through the top of the mesh you just want it about there and that should be fine so yeah if you want to do that to make it more like a bag i mean yeah go ahead but honestly it's entirely up to you but yeah that's how you make this so here is the part of the video where i show you guys how to turn your mesh and texture into a real roblox accessory now obviously you're only able to upload it to the avatar shop if you actually have ugc access if you guys want to apply to ugc i'll leave a link to the form down below in this video's description just keep in mind you should make quite a few models and put them all in like a portfolio before you actually try and go through with the application but ugc is apparently going to be public soon anyway so yeah maybe you can just use this video to help you out and yeah in blender the first thing we're going to do is actually delete the dummy because we don't want to accidentally upload this so we're going to press delete on our keyboard to get rid of that then we just want to go and click on our item we want to right click this like a uh, little dot thing you see that orange dot you want to do set origin and to do origin to geometry what it does is just put it in the middle of your item so when you upload it in studio it's just a lot nicer and easier to work with make sure your accessory is under 4,000 triangles to find this out if you just click on this option down here you can just enable statistics if it is over 4,000 maybe just remove some parts because I don't think Robux will let you upload it if it's over 4,000 but yeah what we're going to do guys is export the mesh and also the texture into our downloads folder so we can upload it to Roblox Studio so let's go and do that right now so select the item go to file go to export and click on obj this one right here from here guys you want to give it a name so I'm just going to call mine DIY uh, trash mask something like that then we're just going to go and click on export obj and we should be good now we're going to do the same thing for the 
the texture. So we're gonna go to UV editing. We're gonna go to image. We're gonna go to save as. And yep, you wanna give it a name. So I'll just put a two at the end because I did do this earlier, but let me just go and save the image. And there you go. Let's go on to Roblox Studio and let's turn this into a real Roblox accessory. So go and load up a blank base plate and you want to import two characters. If you guys wanna use the load character plugin, I'll leave a link to this down below. You can just type in anyone's username. So I don't know, just type in like a Bob and then a load of numbers. So if I wanted to use this guy's avatar as like a template, I could go ahead and do that. Or if I wanted to use the owners, I could do that as well. I just made two accounts with, uh, you know, no accessories on because that's going to be easier for me. So what you want to do now, guys, is just right click somewhere on the base plate and you want to click on insert object. From here, you want to type in mesh part, just click on the first one. And as you can see, we now have a gray brick. Now what we're going to do, guys, is use this gray brick to turn it into our accessory. So we're going to go to view at the top. We're going to go on properties. We are going to look for the mesh ID and also the texture ID. Now, if you haven't uploaded these to Roblox yet, you can just go and click on this option and you can go and select it. So what did I just call mine? A DIY trash mask. Yeah. So if we just go and open this, then just click on no. You guys are going to notice, yeah, the accessory spawns in, but it's missing the texture. So let's go and add in the texture ID. I did actually import this earlier, but you can click on add image and choose file. Let me just go and find it. There you go. That's what I added earlier. So let me just use that. Of course, you can import your own if you want to, but there you go. We now have the accessory and it's looking pretty good. But before we upload it or turn it into an actual item, we need to position it on our character. Now there's a very easy way to do this. If you did the geometry correct in Blender, if you just go to view and properties, if you just go and copy the uh, ID of your character, kind of like the position ID. So let me show you. So origin position, if you just go and control copy, then click on the item and just literally copy it across. Like it's literally as easy as that because just control V for paste, press enter. As you guys can clearly see, it jumps onto my character. And because we did the positioning in Blender, it's absolutely perfect. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on it. We're gonna go on View Explorer. We're just gonna rename it quickly to um, DIY Trash Mask, press enter, that's fine. Obviously name it whatever you want to. And we're gonna go on Plugins. Make sure you have the UGC thumbnail tool and also the Asset Creator plugin installed. Now we're gonna click on Asset Creator. We're gonna go on Accessory, Next. We need to click on our item. So DIY trash mask next. Click on the character avatar 100 next. This one is a hat so that's fine. Next again it's a classic avatar. So next one more time and next and there you go it should now be an accessory. So if we just scroll up here you guys can see there it is and it's looking perfect. Now this is honestly ready to upload to Roblox. You can always test it on an avatar if you want to. So avatar 101. If I just go and drag it into this guy so let me just drag and drop it there. There you go. Yeah it works perfectly. So if we want to upload this as an accessory, just click on the avatar, click on the item, go on UGC thumbnail tool, maybe just scroll out a bit, hold shift, get a nice thumbnail. If you like the look of that, you can always just go and accept it. And now it's ready to upload. However, guys, I can't show you this part. This is a secret part that only people in the UGC program can know. And I believe if we tell anyone, we get in a bit of trouble and we might get kicked. So I'm not going to show this bit. Obviously, if you're a member of UGC, then yeah, you will know already. But I'm going to go and upload it and then I'll show you what it looks like once it's on the Roblox website. Obviously, if you've made your own items and you don't have UGC yet, you can either apply or you could sell it to like a star creator or something. I don't know, it's up to you. And here it is, guys, now on the Roblox website. So yeah, I uploaded it. I could sell this. I could make it a limited item. I can pretty much do whatever I wanted. I can even leave it off sale if I wanted to. If you guys want this, maybe I'll make it limited. I might make it kind of rare. I don't know. I haven't really thought about that yet. But yes, I think that's it. I think that's everything you guys need to know about making Roblox accessories, more specifically hats. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.